Hello. Can you hear me properly? Thank you. Um, welcome to my presentation. Uh, this is about deploying your Python web application to the Google Cloud platform. Um, my name is James Moy. Um, I am from Kenya. I'm the CTO and co-founder of a startup called uh, Sky Garden. Uh, Sky Garden is an e-commerce platform for small scale uh, businesses. And uh, we are only in Kenya for now, but we are hoping to expand across the continent very soon. So what we do is we go to brick and mortar shops. Uh, they're already selling offline, but they're not able to sell online. And we help digitize their inventory and put it online. But we go ahead and offer, uh, on top of that, logistics such as, such as shipping and payments. Um, also in Kenya, I'm a developer expert uh, working with Google uh, for Google Cloud. So today we are just uh, we are going to look at uh, various ways you can take uh, your Python web application and be able to deploy it to these Google Cloud services. And we are going to go to look to look at uh, Google App Engine, uh, that is App Engine standard environment, uh, Google App Engine uh, flexible environment. Uh, we are going to look at uh, GKE, and also we are going to look at uh, a new service known as Google Cloud Functions. So let's start with uh, Google App Engine. Uh, what is App Engine? For those of you who may not come across it, it's a platform as a service uh, built by Google, running on their own uh, cloud infrastructure. It has support for multiple runtimes, uh, as we are going to see, which means you can ra write your application on many languages, not just Python. Um, obviously, being a pass, there is no ops on your side. All you need to do is focus on building your code and put it to the cloud and Google handles the rest. Uh, there are two uh, versions of Google App Engine. There is the App Engine standard environment as well as uh, App Engine flexible environment. Um, in App Engine, being a web platform, it comes with a lot of built-in services that you can use uh, within the service. The number one is Blob Storage, which is an API that allows you to store binary data to Google Cloud uh, Storage service. Now, Google Cloud Storage is like Amazon S3. It's a way of storing large files uh, in the cloud. There is also a bunch of APIs that you can use to store your structured data. Uh, you can store data in Cloud Data Store. Uh, you can store data in Cloud SQL, which allows you to provision uh, Postgres or MySQL instances. Um, there is a built-in API for queuing your tasks in the background. Um, if you have long-running processes, you can be able to queue them and run them uh, after the HTTP call has uh, ended. And you can also get access to uh, pub cloud. So cloud pub sub is like an advanced version of uh, task queuing service that uses the AMQ uh, messaging protocol. And there's a built-in emailing service that you can use. You don't have to use uh, an external email service provider. You can use a built-in email service, which also integrate, integrates with other uh, third-party email providers. Uh, there is a built-in uh, API for image manipulation. So you can be able to crop your images, resize them, uh, and you can also be able to change the orientation of those images. Um, you also get built-in caching, which runs uh, on top of memcached. Uh, so you don't have to provision another caching instance. You can just utilize a built-in caching uh, API, API. And also, uh, being a Google service, there's a built-in uh, search service as well. So there are two options uh, you can select from if you want to use uh, Google App Engine. There is standard and flexible. And they have a number of differences that you should know about uh, before you start using any of them. The first one is for standard environment, uh, it has a number of specified runtimes, uh, which means you can only write your application on these languages. That is Java, Python, Go, Node.js, and PHP. Uh, if you're using, for example, .NET, yeah, you cannot be able to run it on standard environment. Now, standard environment runs within a light sandbox uh, that is very limited. Uh, for example, you cannot SSH into your environment once you provision the app. Uh, the maximum request time is actually 60 seconds, uh, quite limited. Uh, you cannot write to the local disk. 
you cannot run background processes, but it has one advantage where it can scale to zero instances. That means uh, if you don't expect anyone visiting your application, you can scale it down to zero instances and you're not paying uh, for that time. Flex, on the other side, packages your application uh, in a Docker image. Uh, and that means you have flexibility on, the, on how you're going to run that application. So that means you can, pack, you can write your application on other languages other than those uh, listed on standard. Uh, it has, supports SSH debugging. Uh, this is because it runs your application in an actual virtual machine in the cloud. So you can be able to SSH and gain root access to your uh, instance. Um, the maximum request time here is 60 minutes, so you can run uh, long requests. And you can be able to write to the local disk since you have access to the VM. Uh, you can be able to support to run uh, tasks in the background. Um, but it cannot scale to zero uh, instances. Uh, you must always have at least one instance running at a time. So if you want to run your app on App Engine, uh, you have to structure it the way App Engine expects it to be structured. And uh, the beauty of App Engine is, especially the Flex, it allows you to run multiple microservices within your project. So you can have a service one uh, with its own source file, and then you define a configuration file, which we normally call the service.yaml, which defines the configuration that are required to run that service. Uh, you can have another service, maybe written in a different language. Uh, and since if you're using App Engine Flex, you are the underlying service is going to be run in a Docker image. Uh, you can run multiple uh, microservices within your, within your project. So this is an example of a configuration file for an App Engine application. So the first thing you do is you define the name of your service, and then you tell App Engine the runtime that you want. For example, here I want to have my app running on Python 3.5. Then you can version your uh, application. Uh, there are many types of instances uh, in which you can run your app, so you can decide if you want a small instance, a big instance, uh, so you just pass in an instance class. And then you can define your own uh, automatic scaling uh, configuration. So you can tell App Engine, for example, if I reach 0 0.65 CPU utilization, uh, raise my instances by one, but you can only go up to 100 instances and always have five instances. Uh, you can also define scaling base, based on latency uh, or the number of requests that you're getting uh, for, your, for your application. For you to be able to use App Engine in your app, uh, you need to first get this tool. This is the Google Cloud SDK tool, and you can get it on cloud.google.com slash SDK. It comes bundled with a number of uh, utilities that are used to uh, orchestrate various services on Google Cloud. Uh, the first one is the G Cloud tool, which we'll be using in this uh, demo. Uh, there is also, the G Cloud tool is the one you use to run deployments uh, to do authorization and configs. There is the GS Util tool, which you can use to uh, orchestrate uh, your storage services on Google Cloud Storage. There is a BQ tool, which is uh, a tool for BigQuery, a data warehousing service. And it also comes bundled with the kubectl tool. Uh, if you were in this room, there was a talk, uh, a very good talk about uh, Kubernetes. So if you run this SDK, it gives you all these tools uh, installed. So I want to show you a demo of running uh, an application on Google Cloud. Um, so I have this, I have this Flask application. Um, the only thing it does is I give it my location, uh, latitude and longitude, and then it goes on Google Maps and finds for me uh, nearby coffee shops. Uh, it's a very simple application. It has only one route for now, and all it does is it renders uh, that to the index.html, uh, which is inside my templates. So I can run this application locally. Um, so if I say it, uh, flask uh, is equals to main.py, and then I say flask run, 
So I'm able to run it uh, locally on my machine, and I can be able to visit this URL on my browser and be able to see in a nearby uh, coffee shop. It, all it does is it gives me uh, the image and the name. Uh, very, very simple application. I'm able to run it locally on my machine uh, using Fast. <coughs> now, how can I run this application on Google App Engine? So I can run it uh, on Google App Engine Flex. The only thing I need to do is to tell Google App Engine the kind of runtime I need to run my application. That is all. So if you put this uh, directory to Google App Engine standard environment, it just looks to see if there is a main.py file, which is uh, the one that has my code. And then it looks at the app.yaml, which is the uh, file that runs your configuration. And then it's going to provision App Engine uh, standard environment for that application. Uh, very simple. So I, the only thing I need to do is run a command. Uh, since I already have the Cloud SDK installed, if I just did gcloud app deploy, that is the command for deploying your application uh, to Google Cloud Flex environment. The first thing it does, it checks if I'm deploying to the correct project. And if I say yes, uh, it's going to start deployment of the service. The first thing it does is uh, to be able to upload all my files uh, to the App Engine service. And then it does some services in the back background uh, to provision that service. So let's see if it's going to succeed deploying. I hope I have an internet connection. So to recap, as it does the deployment, I s have started with a very simple Flask application. I've run it on my local machine. The only thing it does is uh, run this hello world or this uh, main route. And then for me to be able to run it on App Engine, I have provided the app.yaml, which is the main configuration file for App Engine. And for now, the only thing I need is a Python runtime to be able to deploy my application. So the application has been deployed. Uh, this is the URL. Uh, that's the URL. But I can actually access it by running gcloud app browse. And that will open my browser to the location of that uh, application. Um, so very simple from my local machine to App Engine platform in a very, very little code written, a uh, few number of, of lines of code. Now, that is App Engine standard. What if, and you know the limitations we have on App Engine standard. Uh, we cannot, for example, access the instance running that application. We cannot be able to install some third-party libraries. Uh, if we needed more access, more control of our application, we would deploy it to the App Engine flexible environment. And how do you do that? So on the same application, on the same Git repo, I have, I have another repo called Google App Engine Flex. So if I go to Guy Flex, now I've switched to my branch, uh, Google App Engine Flex. It's the same application, uh, very minimal uh, plus application. The only thing here I am doing is in my app.yml, I'm adding more configuration. As you saw, uh, you, ha you can define our configuration for this application. So um, the runtime remains Python, I, but I pass in uh, this parameter A and V, which says I want it to run now in an end flexible environment. And since it's a, a Flask app, which will be running inside a Docker image, I want to run it using GUnicon. So I pass in uh, that command, which will be my entry point. And then I can add more configuration to say the number of instances I need to run this application, the amount of resources I need, CPU, memory size, disk size, uh, etc. cetera. Um, something I forgot to mention is being a Python application, when you push it to App Engine, if it sees you have a requirements file, it's going to install that within uh, the, the virtual environment it creates for your application. And my requirements file is very simple. It just installed Flask, GUnicorn, and uh, the other dependencies that come with Flask. So now that I'm in this branch, if I say gcloud 
app deploy sorry we said G cloud app deploy um, it will again ask me uh, if I'm sure I want to deploy it to that location right now it's going to replace the current uh, app engine app which is running on a standard environment and if you were to check the remote build for this uh, you'll see it actually follows it it actually builds an image for your service as opposed to the other service uh, we just pushed it to a lightweight sandbox this will build an image put it in an image uh, repository and then provision virtual machine to actually run that image um, the only difference between this and the previous uh, app engine standard is in my app.yaml file I have added more configuration. So the moment App Engine saw that I want a flex environment provisioned, it knows it now has to do Docker activity. So you can see now the remote build is doing a lot more than it was doing previously, uh, basically building my image and pulling in dependencies. Um, if it continues, you'll see it runs uh, some commands within that Docker image in order to be able to create uh, my Python web application. so it has put the image in the uh, repository provisioned a VM for that image and it's now pulling that image to run in that VM um, the download is complete what else does it do after that uh, it provisions a Python 3.6 runtime for me uh, creates a virtual environment uh, installs all my dependencies uh, which were in the requirements.txt file. Uh, and then, so it's basically like building uh, a Docker environment within a Docker host. So as that continues, it may take some time. Uh, let me show you uh, what the App Engine dashboard looks like. So if you go to console.google.cloud.com, uh, so this is the Google Cloud Platform Console. Uh, the Cloud Platform Console uh, operates in the context of projects. And the first thing you do when you're creating, uh, when you're opening an account, you use your email. So I'm using my Gmail here. And for me to be able to deploy things into my, uh, into Cloud Platform, the first thing is to create a project. And once you create a project, you have to now connect uh, the Google Cloud SDK to that project. And every resource you create, every deployment that you do, will be put into that uh, particular project. So there are many things you can do with the Cloud Platform Dashboard, but right now we're interested with App Engine. Uh, so you can see my, in the App Engine, it tells you how you're utilizing resources uh, with your App Engine applications. It can tell you the number of fronted instances you have, it's going bad with the storage classes you're using. Uh, if you have any task queues, you can be able to see them. Any cron jobs that are running, uh, any blob stalls, memcache, such, you can be able to see uh, all those services. Um, so since this was now deploying to flexible environment with Docker and all that, it's obviously, as you can see, takes longer than the standard uh, environment deployment. But as that continues, uh, let me go back to my slides. Uh, so that is one way of deploying, or two ways, uh, but deploying to the same uh, platform, App Engine. You can deploy to a minimal light uh, sandbox, lightweight sandbox, which is a bit limited by the number of uh, languages you can use. It's limited that you cannot be able to access it and all that. Or you can deploy to a flexible environment that provisions uh, to a Docker environment. The other way we can deploy the same web application to Google Cloud Platform is using the Google Kubernetes Engine, or GKE. So GKE is a managed uh, production-ready environment for deploying your containerized applications. So in the previous talk that was here, we saw uh, for you to be able to run applications in Docker using Kubernetes, you need to have a Kubernetes environment provisioned or a Kubernetes cluster provisioned. Now, with 
Google Kubernetes engine, you don't have to manage the Kubernetes cluster itself. You only manage uh, the application aspect uh, of your environment. So it's easy, it allows you to easily get up and running with Kubernetes in no time. So you don't have to install and manage any of your, uh, any Kubernetes clusters on your own. The Kubernetes engine uh, is there for you and you can effortlessly scale to thousands of machines. So there are some concepts you need to uh, have at the back of your hands in order to use GKE. Uh, number one is you need to know what Docker is, how do you use it within your application. I won't go into the details of that. So at the very basic, you need to be able to package your application in, in Docker. Uh, then it's recommended that you put uh, your Docker images in the container registry. So container registry is a private Docker hosting service within Google Cloud itself. Um, you can still put your images in Docker Hub, but if you're provisioning a GKE uh, cluster, it's recommended you use a container reg uh, registry which is managed by Google as well. Then you need to understand Kubernetes. Uh, there are some concepts in Kubernetes that you should know. Uh, number one, what is a Kubernetes cluster? Uh, what is within the cluster when you provision it? A cluster is where your applications are, are going to be running. It contains of nodes, and within no those nodes, uh, it's where you deploy your containerized applications. Um, pods are the building blocks of Kubernetes. So when you package, when you deploy your image, you are most likely going to deploy it in a pod. So a pod is a collection of containers, most of the times a single uh, image. Uh, and it has the options dictating how that pod should be run. So pods are motto, they are always coming and going. So every time you deploy a new version of your application, the old pods are killed and new pods are, are provisioned. Um, and each pod within the cluster will be assigned a unique IP, which is what allows other services to be able to discover uh, those, those pods. Then there's a deployment, which is basically a definition of how your pods are being uh, de deployed. Um, if a deployment config changes, the cluster will automatically create a new uh, set of pods based on the configuration rules. And you can roll back a deployment to a previous version if there is a problem. If you roll, if you create a new deployment and you introduce a problem in production, it's very easy to roll back uh, to a previous uh, deployment. Then once you've deployed your pods, there needs to be a way to discover those pods. And the way you do that is using services. So services enable discoverability of your pods from within the cluster and from outside the cluster as well, since, as we said, each pod is assigned an IP address. So besides being assigned an IP address, you also have to label your pods. And that is how services are able to know which pod they are supposed to select for which requests. Um, and a service can load balance uh, pods within your cluster. Um, and there are several types of services you can create. You can create a cluster IP to expose it to the outside world or using a node port as well. And every time you create a service, uh, a DNS entry is created within the Kubernetes cluster to enable discovery. So let's see if we can do a demo for this as well. So this is still deploying, uh, a bit disappointing. Uh, but within the same project, uh, within the same project, I have another branch I'm calling Kubernetes. Uh, so if I was to choose to switch to the Kubernetes branch, uh, you'll see it's pretty much the same application that I was deploying to that I was deploying to App Engine. It's the same uh, application, but now I want to deploy it as a Docker image built by me to a Kubernetes cluster. Now, there are several files we will introduce into our project to enable that configuration. And the first one is a Docker file. So for you to be able to run your app in a cluster, you have to package it in a Docker file. 
And the only thing I'm doing with this Docker is file is I'm saying I need a uh, Python 3.5 uh, Python image, and then I'll copy all my code into that image, and then define a working directory, uh, install my requirements, and then define an entry point for my application. So then I create a deployment. Uh, this is the deployment that is going to create pods running my application packaged in Docker within my cluster. And um, so for you to create a deployment, this is the kind of template you would use. But the most important part is where you define the number of pods you want running within your deployment. I will say I want three pods. And I'm going to label my app and call it Flask. And it is going to go to the container registry and look for um, a Docker image that is uh, labeled that way. So the first thing we do is to build this Docker image. And if we come here, so that is still running. Um, so if I was to do Docker build minus T, let me mix this uh, version 3. Let me make that. Mm. Sorry. Luckily, I had that copied somewhere. So that, okay, I know where the problem is. Yeah, I need a dot to give, uh, to make it build in the current directory. So I'm building my Docker image locally. Uh, it is using this uh, Docker file in order to build my application. Um, so it has been built, and this is the image. Let me see if I can run it. Docker run in detached mode. This is port 5000 to port 5000. And that is the image that I wanted to run. Let me see if it's running. Uh, yes, it is running. So if I was to go to this IP, uh, I should be able to access my application running locally in a Docker container. It's the same application, but right now I'm running it. Uh, in a Docker image uh, running within my machine. So while we are there, I can see this finished uh, running. So can we browse it and see if it managed to run correctly? Running with uh, within uh, a pinging, you can see it's using the same URL as the previous one, but the previous one is standard. This one is a flexible environment. So now let's run this. Uh, let's run this image. Uh, let's run this. We've created in GKE. So we can kill it locally first. We don't need it running locally for long. And then uh, the other thing we do is to push it to the container registry. And the command for that is you use gcloud. Then you say, I want to do a Docker push. And this is the image um, that I want to push. So the naming for this is a bit uh, intriguing. And the reason it's named that way is, sorry. Um, so the naming for this So the naming for this follows a certain convention where we start with uh, gcr.io, which is the host name of the container registry, uh -huh. okay. uh, which is the name of container registry followed by, by my project uh, name, and then the name and tag of the image that I'm pushing. So that will now go to the container registry. Uh, but at the same time, I can show you 
some images I had put into the container registry before. So if I scroll down here in my in my cloud platform console, you can see the images I have been pushing here. Um, for me to be able to now run this uh, in a Kubernetes cluster, all I need to do is come to my deployment and give it the image that I want to run in this application. I had already built a version two of this image. So if I come here, although that has also finished, so I can actually use V3 here. I can actually use V3. And for us to be able to run this deployment, uh, we just use the kubectl tool. For you to be able to use kubectl, you have to create a cluster uh, in GKE. Uh, luckily for me, I had already created a cluster. Uh, you can see I have a Kubernetes cluster already running on, uh, at that location. And you can be able to see it if you come to GKE, Kubernetes engine, you can be able to see <coughs> that I already have a cluster running uh, in my project. So how do I run, um, how do I run this deployment? So if I say kubectl apply minus f, sorry, minus f deployment the channel. So it's going to apply that deployment configuration into my cluster. And if I was to say kubectl get pods, I had already provisioned this uh, cluster with three pods. You can see it's now doing a running update uh, where it's killing existing or it's terminating existing pods and at the same time uh, provisioning new pods with my new, uh, with my new image. So if you keep calling it, you'll see now I have three running, terminating two, three running, terminating two, three running, terminating one. And on my deployment here, I said I just want to have three replicas of my application running. So how do I know uh, if my application has been deployed? How do I access it? I use the service uh, which I described. And for now, we just have a service that uses the TCP protocol to be able to route traffic from port 8 to port 5000. Um, so I had already applied that service. So if I say kubectl get services, um, it will be able to give me an external IP that I can follow and be able to see if I have my application now running um, in a Kubernetes cluster. So the same application running now on three different environments. This one is a Kubernetes cluster. We started with a flexible, very, very limiting uh, environment. Then we went, I mean, a standard, very, very limiting environment. Then we went to flexible, and now, flexible, and now we are running it uh, in a Kubernetes cluster. So in the interest of time, I will stop there. I will not go into functions. I'm told we are out of time. I don't know if we have time for questions. Yes. I couldn't help noticing the, the Google Cloud Flexi and the Kubernetes ones didn't um, have it, um, HTTPS. So are you then um, responsible for securing or installing SSL certificates yourself? Within App Engine? Yes. Um, because the, the standard one had HTTPS. So is that built into standard H, um, App Engine? Yeah, it's built into standard. Um, I'm not sure about the flex part of it, um, but the flex one gives you more flexibility to be able to do things on your own. So I'm pretty sure when it comes to that, you can be able to do it yourself. Any other questions? 
Okay, what, what, I, what I didn't get at the, at the beginning is that, okay, there's two, there's two things here. There's standard, there's flexible. So what I want to clarify, is are they both paid or is standard the, like a free version and then you have to pay if you want to use flexible? Okay, both are two different products. Uh, they are both paid services. Uh, it's not free, but Flex is actually like an evolution of standard. So the very, very first versions of App Engine were just App Engine standard. And recently, due to a lot of requests, they introduced the fle flexible environment. But at the end of the day, you have to pay for the underlying resources that are running your application. Um, just related to that, um, are you uh, you guys more fans of App Engine or Kubernetes cost-wise? What's Kubernetes Engine? What, what, what do you prefer? Um, um, App Engine standard, say, versus Kubernetes. Cost-wise, um, at the very, very basic of it, if you are to dig really inside, Kubernetes or GKE actually runs on Google Compute Engine, which is the EC2 version of Google Cloud. So it provisions the um, <coughs> compute VMs to run your cluster. The same thing with uh, App Engine Flex. It actually co provisions a uh, compute uh, VM to be able to run your Docker images. So at the end of the day, what they say is you're paying for the underlying infrastructure, for the hardware that is running your application. You're not paying for GKE itself as a service. You're not paying for App Engine as a service. They charge you for the infrastructure below. Um, surely we have more questions as a Google developer expert. Yeah. Sorry, just a, a comment on the previous um, Kubernetes versus um, uh, App Engine. Um, my understanding is the app, uh, Kubernetes just makes it more portable. So you could you could develop your app and then so if you don't like Google, you go Amazon or because it's sort of a based on Kubernetes. Um, the second question was more around, um, you, you, you didn't talk about cloud functions, mm -hmm. but do you have any, any comments on cloud functions around the background fu background jobs? In other words, something that needs more than 10 minutes runtime. Right. Um, and whether there's sort of any, I don't know if there's internal discussions at Google around um, extending that or bringing out other products. So there is cloud functions, uh, which is, um, it, you don't even need to manage it. Uh, you can manage the underlying hardware that is running uh, App Engine or Kubernetes. You can do resource allocation, but with functions, you don't do that. Uh, with functions, you just write code that gets triggered whenever there's a request, and you only pay for it uh, for that time. So when choosing which service to use, you'd have to consider um, what kind of application are you running. Is it an application that needs to be up all the time? Or is it a piece of application that gets triggered once in a while? Uh, you can run that in a function. But then again, functions, since it's a very new concept, right now they only support Node and Python 3.7. Um, and you use functions to build sort of like applic applications that are triggered uh, by, by triggers from various aspects of your application. For example, you can have a service that runs, uh, you can have part of your code whose work is to process images. Uh, and maybe you don't have images being uploaded all the time. So you can write a function that gets triggered whenever a new image is uploaded and processes that image. And you only pay for it when uh, it is triggered. So that's the kind of difference between the two. But functions are a very, very new concept. They're still under active de development. Uh, on Google Cloud, they are now in beta but you can experiment with Python and Node.js, uh, yeah. Uh, do you feel, did your first question get answered about the uh, Kubernetes platform being able to port it? Yeah, well, I, I had a similar question to, uh, I had a similar question to one of the Google uh, mm -hmm. the Kubernetes engineers, and I, I couldn't quite get why one would look at Kubernetes compared to App Engine until it just penny dropped where if you need to be able to shift your, your sort of infrastructure around and be platform agnostic, then you've got to look at those things. Because there's, there's obviously a bit more overhead in terms of DevOps stuff, stuff to yeah. manage your cluster. Yeah, from um, at Kubernetes, there's more DevOps uh, because you're the, ones, you're the one building the Docker 
uh, images. You manage the Docker images yourself. You define the scheduling, the scaling yourself. But with App Engine, uh, you just write a single uh, file defining the configuration of your app. And then the creating of those images and storing is done behind the scenes. So at the end of the day, they might not seem very, the differences might be very trivial for small applications, but I'm sure they would show when uh, you keep scaling your uh, production workloads. The other comment was um, just because with, uh, I think there's the um, on-prem version of Kubernetes as well. Mm -hmm. So you could, you could have your app locally sort of run on different platforms, locally and cloud-based. Yes, so the on-prem version is basically running the same uh, GKE cluster, but uh, within your own infrastructure. Uh, it's a very, very new service introduced, I think, uh, sometime this year. I haven't used it. Uh, I don't know if there's anyone using it in the room. Cool. Well, James, thank you so much for your time. It was a fantastic talk. Thank you. It's time for tea.